Hello, everybody. Um, I will show you the situation of the place where I'm working. Then I'll give you a diagnosis of the situation. And then um, I'll explain what I'm doing actually in this project, what four main innovation points. This is the area where I work up there in that circle. It is the province of Chaco, and more precisely, the area of the, known as the impenetrable. And um, I will show you the pictures. It is in the north of Argentina, and it is together with Formosa, the province to the north, it is the poorest area by far of the whole of Argentina. This is the village I mainly work. It says El Sauzalito, Futuro del Impenetrable. So this is the future, let's go back to the past, right? <laughs> but um, this is the, the welcoming sign you get. And this is why it is known as the impenetrable. This road is 245 kilometers long. If it rains, nobody goes out or in. If you're in the middle, you're stuck in the middle. Many people actually have died and die if it happens because the ambulance cannot go to the hospital. So it's a really rough area, really rough place to live in all senses. These are actually butterflies, by the way, if you're wondering. Um, Fun day I was on the bus, so what is this thousands and thousands of them probably in some seasons that happens? I'll show you the situation of indigenous education timeline. Charco, the province of Charco is by far the most advanced regarding indigenous education. That's where it is supposedly uh, more welcoming. In 1987, the Sigma Teacher Training Center was created to train indigenous people to act as personnel, first teaching assistants, first ones who were qualified in 1989, and then intercultural bilingual teachers. They were full, fully qualified teachers, not assistants of the white teacher. So they were not translating, they were planning their classes, their lessons, and so on. Take into account that it was not until 2008 that the area of intercultural bilingual education in the Ministry of Education of Chaco was created. So basically, they were on their own. There was nobody in the Ministry of Education with an area uh, looking over this new experience. 2010, Law 6604, the Com, Wichia, Mokhoi languages are declared official together with Spanish. That sounded like it was wonderful, great advance. However, next year, Decree 2057 regulated that officiality. That's a common thing with uh, all languages anywhere. There is, this language is declared official, but there needs to be a regulation of what that officiality entails, what obligations for the administration and what rights for the speakers. This decree from 2011, among other things, it said that there, there needs to be an, an institute of Aboriginal languages of the province. This is 2016, that has not been done. Simply, the law was not applied. To add insult to injury, in 2016, this year, in January, there was this member of parliament that presented a law to be approved that actually wants to create the Institute of um, Aboriginal Languages of the province, something that has already been approved five years ago, six years ago. However, it is just ignored. I, I, I remember seeing on Facebook the news, all these indigenous teachers and so on that they have as contacts, um, sharing the news. And I was thinking, nobody remembers the law. This was already approved six years ago. Well, then people started to think, yeah, that's right, I remember. Well, the law is simply not applied. 2013, 2014, the curriculum of primary and secondary education is published. But we have teachers in the schools since 1994. So what were they teaching if they didn't have a curriculum to follow? Nothing, they were just teaching what every other teacher. So what do you do in that 
hour that you have to teach an indigenous language and culture, whatever you want. It's not going to be evaluated, it's not going to be assessed, and you have no guidelines whatsoever. 2014, community managed schools. That gives not better education, but it gives more power to the communities because now the director of the school in an area where most students are indigenous, director has to be indigenous, and there has to be a community in council. And between the director and this community council, they will choose 50% of the school personnel, teachers, cleaning people, everybody. And the other 50%, the Ministry of Education, as it was before. 2015, this other law included intercultural bilingual education in the teacher's statute because they were not simply included in the general charter of teachers. One minute. Thank you. <laughs> this other law, all indigenous teachers and assistant teachers were named civil servants. This research by UNICEF in 2011 showed that in the, actually it was in the capital of the province, this is not as remote, this is not as bad as it would be up there in the north. However, it is shown it was a complete disaster. After 25 years, indigenous students in the capital of the province were getting devastatingly bad results, far worse than white people. This is a holistic approach for revitalization. You can read about the different stages in my paper. Documentation of bold language and uh, cultural uh, manifestations. Communication among them, especially when they are long distances. That's where new technologies can influence in all these five stages and make a huge difference. Respect um, traditional methods. Dissemination, news, online newspapers, blogs, websites, etc. Education, that's where I'm working with. I'll give you two, two little hints. Monetization, because all this is great, but if you are as poor as they are, you couldn't care less about the language, about losing the language, losing your culture. You want to get money to rear, to rear your children, basically. These are the four projects, that the four points of the project I'm doing. This is a language exchange. <laughs> Actually, the Wichi people are teaching the researcher the Wichi language, and at the same time, they are receiving English language, uh, English language lessons. So this is a quid pro, pro quo. Ethical issues are addressed because we have to ask, I'm doing this research, okay, that's fine for me, but how is my research gonna benefit their lives? That's, that's the main point. It is collaborative learning between the linguist, language instructor, myself, and the native speaker. We are working on how your language works, because you are a native speaker, but you don't know, you've never been taught, and because you teach your children only to write and read the language that they already write, they already know. It is exclusively online, potential for many other learning opportunities, about their rights, about law, about health, about many other things. Exclusively online, from the impenetrable to here, every day. And there will be a follow-up with a basic overview of the language, with text, audio, um, and pictures. This is a picture of the last founder of the um, South Salito village, who died just last year. This was in 2013. And this is a notebook that he had with his writing. You can see this is mold because this uh, notebook was there from 1944. And in this text, it is very interesting because he says the importance of education. He's complaining. It is actually in Spanish. If you can write it, you will see his broken Spanish, the funny way he has of speaking it. And he complains about this teacher. He's actually the first teacher that went to the village that doesn't want to teach, that doesn't teach very much, that um, Aboriginal children are learning very slowly. So he never went to school because when he was born, there were no schools up there, but he knew the importance of that. It was the wisdom of the old Wichi people that schools took away because now the authority is the teacher. Thank you very much. <laughs>